Our next film today is a first network TV showing for a Steven Spielberg animation about a Russian family of mice heading for a new life in America. An American tale is at 10 to 2. Enjoy the magic of Michael Jackson on BBC One. Not going anywhere. You've been hit by a smooth into the world of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker on New Year's Day at six on BBC One. Now it's cartoon time and a double bill from a favourite duo, Tom and Jerry. Blob a doodle, yellow bug, doodle on a ding, come a rock, top bottom it, tremble. In five minutes, a Jetson Christmas Carol. Enjoy the magic of Christmas on BBC One as the Antiques Roadshow meets some young collectors. But you just never see dinky toys in condition like this. It's, it's so exciting, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> With the help of the Going Live team and their top expert, this special edition looks at everything from planes to trains to submarines. They're all in our first roadshow for young people. That's the Antiques Roadshow Going Live. Join Hugh Scully and the Going Live team tonight at 6.15 on BBC One. Now it's just coming up to one o'clock. Time for the news on BBC One with Jill Dando. Good afternoon. The United States has announced full diplomatic recognition for Russia and five other members of the Commonwealth of Independent States. In Moscow, defence ministers from the new Commonwealth have been discussing how future military arrangements will be handled. And after Mikhail Gorbachev's resignation as president, the Soviet Parliament has now met to vote itself out of existence. The Russian flag was flying over the Kremlin today in place of the hammer and sickle, which was taken down last night after some 70 years. This morning in the Soviet Parliament, a handful of deputies went through the motions of formally voting the Soviet Union out of existence. It was a rather pathetic end for the Parliament, which once saw ferocious debates and Gorbachev glasnost at its best. Immediately afterwards, workmen removed the plaque which said Supreme Soviet of the USSR. Yet another symbol of the old Soviet Union had been taken down, but they kept the screws as souvenirs. This morning, President Gorbachev's staff were still trying to take it all in. This is probably their last day at work. They're expected to leave the Kremlin tomorrow, though technically they'll get wages until January the 2nd and receive two months severance pay after that. Many of us uh, don't know what will happen in the future. Not everybody will have uh, the jobs in the new administration. And uh, it's natural when people, when people are losing their jobs, uh, they're concerned. Today, not all the reminders of communist rule have gone from the Kremlin, but it probably won't be long. Ben Brown, BBC News, Moscow. There's been more world reaction to Mr Gorbachev's resignation. The French president, François Mitterrand, called him one of the most remarkable men of the 20th century. But in China, the official news agency said he'd brought chaos, ethnic strife and economic crises. In his televised address, President Bush stressed the debt owed to the Soviet president, the former Soviet president. He spoke of hope for the future. Mikhail Gorbachev's revolutionary policies transformed the Soviet Union. His policies permitted the peoples of Russia and the other republics to cast aside decades of oppression and establish the foundations of freedom. His legacy guarantees him an honored place in history and provides a solid basis for the United States to work in equally constructive ways with his successors. The Yugoslav Federal Army has kept up its attacks on the town of Osijek in eastern Croatia. Zagreb Radio said more than 100 shells were fired on the town last night. The latest bombardment began on Christmas Eve, and many people have stayed in the shelters and cellars since then. The local hospital says one man was killed and 10 wounded in last night's fighting. 
New figures released today show North Sea oil and gas production fell last month. The industry index, prepared by the Royal Bank of Scotland, shows production at its lowest level since August. The figures show a small drop in the amount of oil extracted from the North Sea in November, following five months of rising output. The decrease at 3% isn't huge and may not be repeated, but its effect is heightened by two other factors. The pound is strong against the dollar. Oil is priced in dollars. That means our oil is worth less in pounds. And world oil prices have been dropping. It all conspires to cut the value of North Sea oil to the government. The Chancellor has been trying to discern an end to the recession from a tiny increase in industrial output. But those figures have been boosted by the value of oil. With that dropping, a true end to the recession slips further away. And that's it. Our next news on BBC One is at ten past five. Now over to Ian McCaskill for the weather forecast. Hello. It's a grand day for getting around. There's a lot of cloud over the country, but this huge area of high pressure will keep mainly dry weather going for a few days. But as it builds, an increasing risk of fog in the south. But no fog anywhere today. A lot of cloud, some brightness in the east, a little drizzle in the southwest and the northwest, and still showers and gales in Shetland. But those winds moderating in the next 24 hours. Those are the average winds at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Still a breeze from the northwest, keeping the fog at bay. And mild everywhere too. 10 Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit. Some places doing better than that. 12 is 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, a lot of clouds, still some drizzle in the northwest and the southwest. Um, some clear skies in the east. One or two fog patches forming over central and southeastern England late in the night, but nothing widespread, I don't think. Tomorrow night, it may be different. Very little, if any, frost. 4 Celsius is 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Then tomorrow, a little rain in the north, a little drizzle still in the southwest. Most places dry, broken clouds, some brightness in the east, but fog patches in the south tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. Enjoy the magic of Boxing Day on BBC One. At 6.15, the Antiques Roadshow goes live in a special edition for young people. What's this frock worth now? That would make about 100 to 150 now. And it's really, I mean, it costs a few shillings at the time. At 7, Grant has a surprise. Sharon, don't. Come on. Don't touch me. I thought you'd like it. I thought you'd love well, it. Well, I don't, do I? And there's trouble for Bergerac at 7.30. You haven't got a cat and house chance of copying anyone without a confessional. I'm gathering the evidence. And a lot of it is pointing at you. At 9.35, A Fish Called Wanda. Award-winning comedy with Kevin Kline, the long-suffering Michael Palin, Jamie Lee Curtis and John Cleese. She loves a book. It does not understand the world of realists. It does not A Boxing Day of Delights, this Christmas on BBC One. Someone's giving some lip in Neighbours, but will the Phantom Kisser finally be unmasked? We'll find out in 25 minutes. Before which, we find out how a space-age family celebrate the festive season as we enjoy a Jetson Christmas Carol.